One commonly used tool by beginners in Grasshopper is the Voronoi pattern. A Voronoi pattern is a way of defining regions based on a collection of points, and they usually produce cellular patterns commonly seen in nature. So Grasshopper comes with a Voronoi component to help us create these patterns easily. If we just navigate up to the Mesh tab and go to the Triangulation drop-down menu, you'll find a collection of Voronoi components and options. I'm going to select the simple Voronoi component, click and drop it onto the canvas. So you'll notice nothing's actually happening right now, and we get a little error on our Voronoi component telling us that the input parameter points failed to collect data. Let's have a look at the inputs we have for the Voronoi component. We have a collection of points that will form the Voronoi diagram. We have radii, it's an optional cell radius. We have a boundary that we can contain our diagram within, and then we have a, an optional plane for the Voronoi diagram to sit on. So the easiest way to get started with the Voronoi diagram is to create a collection of points. Rather than clicking a collection of random points in Rhino and then referencing them in, we can really easily create a random collection of points using Grasshopper. If we navigate to the Vector tab and go to the Grid drop-down menu, you'll see a few Populate options. I'm going to select Populate 2D, and what this will do is create a collection of points within a boundary inside of Grasshopper. So you'll see if I click on it, I have all of these points specified in Grasshopper, and they're um, caught within this boundary of this rectangle here. So the Populate 2D component basically randomly generates points within this boundary. So the region is defined by a rectangle, which we see is that region that everything sits within. The count gives us the number of points to add, which is currently 100. So if we increase that, we'd have more. If we decrease it, we have less. The seed's quite interesting. This is how Grasshopper generates randomness. If we change that value from 1 to, say, 2, we'll get a different type of randomness, basically. And then you can also add to a pre-existing point population. So we're not really going to worry too much about the inputs right now. We're going to go straight ahead and use our point list we've generated and plug it straight into the Voronoi component so we can get our first Voronoi diagram. And you'll see straight away this cellular-like pattern appears um, around our points. And basically the way the Voronoi works is it measures the distance between neighboring points, finds the midpoint, and find the perpendicular line between those points, and then just basically creates a cell around each of those um, neighboring points in their perpendicular line. So you'll notice I have a bit of an issue with my Populate 2D right now. The boundary extends really far out, way further than the actual specified boundary we have in our Populate 2D. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to add a region, which will be a rectangle, that will also act as the boundary for Voronoi. And I'm going to do that by creating a rectangle in Grasshopper. So I'm going to come up to here into the geometry container and create a rectangle. You can obviously double click and type rectangle on the canvas as well. And I'm going to right click on my rectangle container and set one rectangle. And you'll see in the top left I get a prompt just as if you were drawing a rectangle inside of Rhino. So I've got to specify the first corner of my rectangle. I'm going to specify it zero. Then I'm just going to make my rectangle a length of 50 by 50 units, and I'm going to hit return, and you'll see my kind of previewed rectangle comes here as this square we've created. I can go ahead and drop that into our Populate 2D component, and it'll immediately update, and those 100 random points that we've generated will fit within this rectangle that we've specified. Now, I also want to contain the Voronoi diagram within this boundary as well, so I can drag that into the boundary input for the Voronoi, and you'll see it just cuts off that extra outside bit and we get a nice simple cellular pattern for our Voronoi diagram. We could then go and add some more control over this. So I could go and change the count for the Populate 2D from 100 to maybe say 150. Oops, 150. Um, and that'll give me a denser um, diagram. So you see we're adding points to this population, and then that affects the Voronoi pattern because it has more points as an input. So I could drag this slider up and watch my Voronoi diagram update. I could also make it less dense and much lower resolution as I drag that right down to, say, like 10. Um, so you can have a really quick um, play around with that kind of parametric relationship. Another really kind of helpful thing to note about this simple Voronoi um, component, um, I'm just going to quickly create a new one to d show this, is that we could turn this into kind of like a facade pattern or something for a building or some kind of, um, you know, construction project that you're working on um, with a different type of relationship. So this boundary that we actually have here 
Whilst it takes in a rectangle input, it can actually swap out to be a surface input. So if we create a simple surface inside of Rhino, say with like, you know, a plane. So this will just create like a nice simple two, um, 2D flat plane for me, which is a surface in um, Rhino, you can see there. And if I reference that surface in here, I'm gonna go right click, set one surface like that. Um, so you'll see that this surface is now tethered to my Rhino surface, it's referenced into Grasshopper like how we referenced the points earlier. We could go and actually populate some points on top of this surface. So if we jump over to the Vector tab again and go to Grid, there's a Populate Geometry component. And this works very similar to the Populate To Do, but it takes any kind of surface or volumetric geometry and basically puts points on top of that surface. So if I go and plug my surface into geometry, you'll see a bunch of points appear on the surface. And now as I move it around, they kind of follow that surface. So we can then go ahead and drop the population into points and we get our Voronoi diagram. And then this surface can also act as a boundary for our Voronoi pattern to cut it off. And this gives us a lot of control because now we can, you know, rotate this surface with our gumball and the Voronoi pattern will actually follow along with the surface at any kind of rotation that we put it on, which is a really great way to, you know, translate uh, something in, you know, a 2D surface into maybe a more three dimensional form. And this works in the exact same way as the populate 2D component. I could make a number slider for 150 increase the count, and I once again get that parametric relationship that we had before. So we could easily now go and turn this into a 3D Voronoi diagram. If we navigate to Mesh and go to Triangulation, you'll see there's a component called Voronoi 3D. I'm going to click on that and drop it onto the canvas. Now the Voronoi 3D component has less inputs. It's asking for a collection of points, and then it's asking for an optional boundary or a box in this case. So the points for the Voronoi diagram that we could create, if we go back to our vector tab and go to grid, this time we could select the populate 3D component. And this doesn't just populate a geometry or a 2D plane, but rather a box specified us or by us or a region um, it's going to put those points within. So I'm going to drop that onto the canvas now. You'll see the regions asking for a defined box. I'm actually going to go and create a box component just a simple geometry container. You can find it under params, geometry. I'm gonna right click on the box and go set one box, starting from zero again. I'm just gonna do the same size as this rectangle. So I'm gonna go 50, 50, and then 50 up in the Z axis like that. And this will form as our region. So I'm gonna plug my box into there and you'll see I now have populated the inside of my box with you know 100 of these points. So I can go and put those points into the Voronoi 3D diagram. We can just make sure that it's capped within our boundary by putting the box in as the region. And now if we kind of preview off a few of these components that we have on our canvas, you'll see I get a 3D Voronoi pattern with 3D objects. And if I were to go and bake that, you know, I get all these kind of interesting cellular pieces of geometry.